Hello folks, this is Rav Bari, Brown University physics grad student. Today I welcome you to the first episode of the Physics GRE. The Physics GRE is a PhD entrance exam for physics programs here in the US. And today I'm going to show you how to solve a Physics GRE practice problem. In fact, over the course of the next many lectures, I'm going to show you step by step how to solve each and every uh, problem from different sections of the Physics GRE. Classical mechanics, e &M, special relativity, thermodynamics, all bases covered. As far as I know, there are no YouTube videos on solving physics theory problems. So these will be a first. So here's our problem. We have a box of five kilograms on this inclined plane of 45 degrees, and we exert a force, an applied force of 10 newtons on the box. Now there is friction between the box and the ramp. And that friction is mu sub k is equal to 0.5. That's our coefficient of kinetic friction. Now the question is, what is the acceleration of the block down or up the ramp? Okay, so what is the acceleration of the block? Okay, and these are our choices. Let me just go through the, a few of the choices. Uh, root two meters per second squared up the ramp. Okay, that would mean the block goes this way. It accelerates up. Root two meters per second squared down the ramp. Okay, it accelerates down. Five root two meters per second squared up the ramp. Okay. 5 root 2 meters per square down the ramp, and 25 root 2 meters per square down the ramp. Okay, so pick a choice, uh, try to select one of the answers, and now let's go ahead and see if your answer is correct. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw this picture bigger over here. Let's draw this picture larger. Okay, the best thing you can do for yourself when solving physics problems is draw a large diagram. Okay, so here's our picture, magnified. We've got our 45 degree inclined plane. We've got our applied force. Let's use different colors whenever possible. Here is our applied force of 10 newtons. 10 newtons of applied force. We've got a five kilogram box. Here's the mass of our box, five kilograms. Okay, and we've got friction. We've got friction characterized by this coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k is 0.5. Okay, so let's take a look at the forces acting on this box. Okay, so what are the forces acting on our box? Well, first of all, we've got gravity, right? The evergreen force, and it acts straight down, right? Here's our gravitational force, which we can, if you've solved inclined plane problems before, we can break down the gravitational force into a perpendicular component, Fg perpendicular, because it's perpendicular to the inclined plane, and a parallel component which we will denote Fg parallel because this component is parallel to the surface of the inclined plane. Okay, so we can figure out what Fg perpendicular and parallel are by doing as follows. So Fg perpendicular is equal to and Fg parallel is equal to. So what is Fg per perpendicular and parallel equal to? Well, I know that they're equal to either Fg cosine theta or sine theta but I always forget which is which, okay? Is Fg perpendicular cosine theta or is Fg parallel Fg cosine theta? Well, the good thing is you don't have to remember. See, physics will reveal the answer to you by looking at an extreme case. Let's say we have a very inclined ramp with a very high theta, a theta that is very close to 90 degrees, okay? But not quite, but very close. Well, then here is our block on this very inclined plane. On this very inclined plane, what would we expect? Would we expect the Fg perpendicular component that I've drawn here in red, Fg perpendicular component? Would we expect this Fg perpendicular component to be greater? Or would we expect the Fg parallel component that I've drawn in blue to be bigger? Well, of course, we would expect that Fg parallel is much greater than Fg perpendicular. Why would we expect that? Well, simply because the inclined plane is so tilted that it seems like the majority of the gravitational force should be directed in the downwards direction, not in a direction perpendicular to the inclined plane. And so the only way that Fg parallel can be greater as we increase the theta angle is if we attach to Fg parallel a trigonometric function that increases as theta increases. In other words, we can decide if Fg parallel, oops, if Fg parallel is cosine theta 
or sine theta by seeing which one is bigger when theta is close to 90. Okay, so let's say theta is close to 90. Or let's say theta is 90 for sake of simplicity. Is cosine 90 bigger or is sine of 90 bigger? Well, cosine 90 is just 0, but sine of 90 is 1. So that means fg parallel is fg sine theta, and fg perpendicular is fg cosine theta. So now we have decided that fg parallel, so fg, let me write fg perpendicular first, so that's fg cosine theta, and now we've decided that fg parallel is fg sine theta, right? So great, so we've got our force, uh, our components for gravity, let's write them here. So fg perpendicular is fg cosine theta. Now for the purposes of this problem, fg perpendicular, it won't really affect our calculations because we're looking for the acceleration of the block down the incline or up the incline, not through the incline, right? The box is not gonna float up or crash into the incline. So fg perpendicular is actually not gonna be of interest to us right because the box is already in vertical equilibrium it's not going to shoot through the inclined plane or float up so we will only concern ourselves with fg parallel which we have found out through an extreme case analysis to be fg sine theta no memorization necessary so now we know theta in this case is 45 degrees and we know what fg should be right because this is five kilograms so fg can be replaced with mg and sine of theta can be replaced with sine of 45. Now we already know what m is for this problem. Our mass for the box is five kilograms. So this is five. And five times 10 is 50. So this is going to give us 50 times sine of 45, which is one over root two. Okay, great. So we've got fg parallel for our, for our box. It's 50 over root two newtons. Now, are there any other forces? Of course there is, right? There's our applied force. And our applied force, if we look at it carefully, it has components in a direction perpendicular to the plane and a direction parallel to the plane. Let's call that F perpendicular and F parallel. Now, of course, we will only concern ourselves with F parallel because we're only interested with the, with the box's acceleration along the incline, right? So what is F parallel going to be? Well, we see that this angle theta is also going to be 45 degrees, right? Because if you take a look at this horizontal that's parallel to the surface of the incline and this vertical that's perpendicular to the surface of the incline and the fact that this horizontal line is parallel to this horizontal line, then you're forced to conclude that this angle theta can only be 45 degrees. There's nothing else that this angle theta can be. Therefore, what is this F parallel? Well, maybe it's a bit tough to see when we have the triangle tilted like that, but now let's make the triangle upright as follows. Okay, so now this is F perpendicular, this is F parallel, and we have just concluded this angle is 45 degrees. So now we can say what this F perpendicular is, okay? So this F perpendicular now turns out to be 10 cosine 45. But what is 10 cosine 45? If not, 10 over, or cosine 45 is one over root two. So there you go, So that is F parallel. But notice that F parallel is acting up the inclined plane, right? It is acting in this direction. This is F parallel, right? Whereas FG parallel is acting down the inclined plane. So we need some kind of a direction. We need some kind of a sign for the two different directions. So here's the sign convention I'll use. I'll say down the incline is positive and up the incline is negative. So that means FG parallel will have a positive sign for the force and F parallel will have a negative sign for the force since it's acting up the plane. Okay, great. So now I've got all my forces in consideration except one, the force of friction, but we'll come to that shortly. First notice, what is the direction of the net force so far without accounting for friction? The net force as it stands is Fg parallel plus F parallel, that gives us 40 over root two newtons. Now you can see that that is acting down the plane. So that means the force of friction will be acting up the plane. So 
how much is the force of friction? Now that is the question. So the force of friction we can find by using force of friction is mu Fn. This is the force of friction. But what is Fn? Well, Fn is this, right? This is our normal force. Now the normal force is given by, it's equal to the perpendicular component of gravity, but we know what the perpendicular component of gravity is now, right? So this is going to be mu Fg cosine theta. But Fg is, of course, mg, right? So we have mu mg cosine theta. So now we have almost everything. Let's just plug in. We know what our coefficient of kinetic friction is. It's 0.5. We know our mass for the block is 5 kilograms. We know that gravity is 10. And cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. So I've got everything here. So what is this going to be? Well, that's 0.5. So our force of friction is 25 over root 2 newtons, right? Or negative 25 over root 2 newtons, right? Not quite, actually. Not quite. That's because our Fn is not actually Fg cosine theta. No, because there's an additional Fn contribution due to this F perpendicular pushing the box down, right? So remember, not only do we have Fg perpendicular, we also have F perpendicular from the applied forces perpendicular component. That means Fn will not only be a response to Fg perpendicular, it will also be a response to F perpendicular, meaning F, the force of friction will be mu Fn, sure. Okay, this is actually fine. I shouldn't be changing this. But Fn is not only Fg perpendicular, it's also F parallel, or sorry, F perpendicular here. I should have written perpendicular here. So plus F perpendicular, okay? Now F perpendicular, what is that? And that is going to be, let's calculate it. That's going to be F perpendicular is F sine of 45, sine of 45. So that'll be 10 times one over root two, and that is F perpendicular. So that means an F perpendicular goes down, right? It, it goes down. So that means that's going to increase our normal force, and therefore, it's going to increase our force of friction. So our force of friction is not only going to be minus 25 root 2 due to the perpendicular component of gravity, it's also going to be, let's see if I have space here, it's also going to have this contribution from, um, hang on, let's, Slow down a bit. Um, let me erase this over here. We don't have any erasers because apparently this is an Ivy League that runs without erasers. So, okay. Let's write down the force of friction nicely here. Okay. Plus F perpendicular. So this will be mu times mg. So what is m? m is 5. g is 10. Cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Plus F perpendicular which we have just calculated to be 10 times 1 over root 2. So if I go ahead and compute this, this is 50 over root 2 plus 10 over root 2, which is 60 over root 2. And mu, the coefficient of friction, is a half. So this will give us 30 over root 2 for the force of friction. So now I can amend this mistake going back to my net force over here so my force of friction is 30 over root 2 so now my net force will be the force acting down on the block which is the force which is due to fg parallel okay minus f perpendicular that's going to give me 40 over root 2 and then friction is also pulling up up here there's the force of friction okay it acts up with a force of 30 over root 2 giving us a net force of 10 over root 2 down the inclined plane. I know it's down because I chose my convention for down to be positive. So this is going to be 10 over root 2 divided by the mass of the block, which is 5, right? And so this is going to give us 2 over root 2 uh, meters per second squared. Now I can hopefully simplify this. Uh, let's see what 2 over root 2 is. 2 over root 2 is... Let's see, so this is just root 2 meters per second squared. Okay, wonderful. 
Now, which choice is this? Well, this is positive root 2, right? So that means we're going down the ramp, okay? So we should have choice B for our final answer. Let's check the book. Let's check the book. And indeed, it is choice B. So, folks, that's how you solve this physics theory problem. The basic idea was to draw this free body diagram. Do not consider the direction of the friction before you find the net force without friction. And that turns out to be down the plane. That means the force of friction is acting up the plane. But then you've got to be careful when calculating the force of friction because it also has this plus F perpendicular due to the perpendicular component of the applied force pushing down. So the Fn, the normal force, is not just your regular Fg perpendicular. It's Fg perpendicular plus the applied forces perpendicular component here. So that's how you solve this physics theory problem. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.